Hello, everyone. Welcome back to St. Louis Teens. Today, we are here with Pava Lapere, who is the founder of Ecomap Technologies, which uses AI to build platforms that help entrepreneurs find the resources they need. Pava, your focus is on building more equitable and accessible entrepreneurial ecosystems, which you do through Ecomap your, and your nonprofit Innovate Maryland, which works with student entrepreneurs across the state and your accelerator Emergence, which provides an immersive live-in program for entrepreneurs who want to make massive progress on their businesses. Pava, you were also selected for the 25 under 25 social entrepreneurs. Congratulations and thank you so much for your phenomenal service to our entrepreneurs. Thank you, and so thank you for having me. Pava, thank you so much for being here. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and what inspired you to start Ecomap Technologies? Yeah, absolutely. So my career really started um, working on entrepreneurial ecosystem development at the university I went to. So I went to Johns Hopkins and I went there wanting to be a doctor, like everyone who goes to Johns Hopkins. Um, and when I got there, I realized that my passion really lied more in entrepreneurship. Um, and I was really excited to get involved with the entrepreneurial community there only to realize that there was no entrepreneurial ecosystem. There wasn't an entrepreneurship club, there wasn't an incubator, wasn't an accelerator, pretty much nothing, you know? Um, and so me and my friends who wanted to get involved, we figured that we could either pursue our entrepreneurial interests outside of an ecosystem, or we could be the ones to build it. And so that is what we did. So my first venture was actually a nonprofit focused on just building a stronger entrepreneurial community at Johns Hopkins University for students. And one of the things that came out of that was um, an incubator called the Hatchery. And it was the first ever incubator for student ventures at Johns Hopkins, um, which I ran on as a student for two years and it was eventually acquired by the university and I got to run the official university accelerators. And it was through working with students in that accelerator when I realized that it was super easy to show um, students resources around the university ecosystem because it was really small and I knew it obviously very well. But as soon as they were ready to kind of go out and explore resources in Baltimore, you know, the city where Hopkins is, um, I realized there was no one place that I could point them to that had a list of all of the resources that existed within the city. Um, and I knew those resources existed because I had been working in that ecosystem for the past few years. Um, and so this got me really interested in the problem of resource databases. And it sounds like a kind of silly problem, but if there isn't a list of all of the resources that are available to entrepreneurs in any given area, there's two really big problems that arise, right? The first is that it makes entrepreneurship inaccessible because it means that the only people who know how to find the resources to build their startup or their small business or nonprofit are people who are already embedded in some type of network that can direct them in the right area, right? And often those networks are, you know, corporations or educational institutions, which historically, for reasons, you know, beyond this interview, exclude, you know, low income founders, female founders, black founders, other minority class founders, immigrants. And so it makes entrepreneurship inaccessible if you don't have that information readily available in one place. Um, the second thing is that it's just really hard to showcase all of the assets that exist within any given ecosystem, right? Like Baltimore isn't known as a tech hub, but we have a ton of resources. But if you don't have one place that has all that information, you know, you really lose out on the opportunity of showcasing your area's, you know, entrepreneurial ecosystem. And so trying to solve resource databases was really how, you know, Ecomap started. And we did a whole bunch of research into why they didn't exist at scale. And it was a problem with getting all of the data about resources, you know, um, locating all of it, keeping that data up to date, and just making a platform where it was easy for entrepreneurs to navigate. And so, you know, very long story short, we essentially designed um, AI to help us with the process of finding information about all of these resources, extracting that information, putting it to a database, and then pushing it all to this one platform that has like a living, breathing look at every single resource that exists within that area. Um, and that is, you know, what Ecomap does on a day to day. So we build these for different communities, geographies, schools, things like that. And Pava, you mentioned the current inaccessibility often that there is within the entrepreneurship field. And your vision is to create equitable and accessible ecosystems for entrepreneurs, both young and those in struggling communities. How are you accomplishing this goal? So when you look at ecosystem development, you really have to kind of tackle the systemic issues that exclude people from entrepreneurship, right? Um, and one of the barriers that I really focus on that has a lot of contingencies is the financial barrier to entrepreneurship, right? Um, if you are not well connected and you don't have a rich family, you know, getting money at the very earliest stage of your venture is really, really hard. 
right? Um, and so in, you know, in recent years, we've seen a really big rise in things like more venture capital, but it ends up that only 0.05% of companies actually take venture capital. The rest, you know, use traditional debt vehicles like business loans. And those are still very inaccessible to a lot of founders, especially those who don't have money to put up as collateral or they don't have a personal credit history, right? Um, so if you're trying to make ecosystems and entrepreneurship more accessible, you can't get around coming up with funding sources that helps fund entrepreneurs at the very earliest stage of their venture. Um, and to do so, you have to learn to take um, a lot of bets, right? Because when people are giving money for ventures, they want to have a reasonable guarantee that that money is going to be returned to them. It's not going to be lost, right? Um, and that is especially true when you're dealing with debt capital. Um, and so in order to reduce the likelihood that businesses fail, you need an entire ecosystem of support so that you could go to a lender and say, you know, I know this is a first time entrepreneur and maybe they don't have collateral to put up, but we have this whole network of support that's gonna ensure that that business has the resources that they need. Um, and so I think that's really one of the steps I'm focusing on now is first figuring out what do these ecosystem looks like? Like what are all of the different players? How do they interact? Who are they serving? And only once you understand that, can you really start to build new programs to address some of the gaps? Because right now we're just at the stage where we don't know what really exists in our communities. We don't know what founders they are serving. And without knowing that, it's really hard to build more effective programs. So I'm at kind of the very earliest stages of what I want to eventually do. And that's just understanding the landscape and being able to have quantitative evidence of what exists in the landscape, what doesn't, and where we should be putting our focus when it comes to building new programs. And we thank you so much for the wonderful work that EcoMap Technologies is able to do. And I know that it can be difficult, but if you had to sort of pick one part of EcoMap that was your favorite, what would it be? So I think it really was honestly like the customer discovery aspect of it. Um, and you know, like my background is obviously like running accelerators. And so I'm gonna sound like a broken record with this, but like when you are starting any venture, you really need to understand the people who you are serving, right? Just like with this podcast, you need to understand who are the viewers going to be? What do they wanna hear, right? And one of the reasons that a lot of businesses fail is that they kind of gloss over that part. They don't really go out, get into the field and talk to a lot of the people that they wanna help. Um, because I had, you know, the foresight to know that I needed to do that stage, um, we did it really heavily with Ecomap. And so I got to talk to hundreds of different entrepreneurial communities, hundreds of different entrepreneurs, and really learn, you know, what were the issues that they faced. And on the entrepreneur side, it was just this difficulty in knowing what to do next and knowing where to go next to get help. Um, and they really, you know, wanted an easy way to do that that wasn't going to take up too much time because as I'm sure you know you know we don't have time just floating around especially as entrepreneurs right um, and then for ecosystem builders the problem was that to make a resource database it was really expensive um, and it was really hard for them to have the staffing power to keep it updated and there was just this whole list of barriers that like I don't think anybody had really ever asked them about right like no one went up to them and was like tell me why your resource database sucks right um, and it was so amazing to see that these problems were shared throughout ecosystems and then the ability, like having the chance to build a product that solves those specific issues, but impacts entrepreneurs on a very wide scale, because for every ecosystem we're in, we're helping, you know, millions of entrepreneurs, depending on the size of the city. Um, that was the really cool part to like, hear these problems and then actually be able to go build a solution to address them. And then to see how thrilled the customers were when you come back, you know, a few months later and you're like, look, we built this and it meets all these criteria. And can you share with us some of those success stories of the program and the entrepreneurs that you're able to work with? Oh yeah. Um, for Ecomap that, I think the best way to kind of encapsulate that is that, you know, when we're going into a new ecosystem like Dallas, we just launched there a few weeks ago. Um, we often, especially during COVID, don't get to be on the ground and seeing the entrepreneurs, right? Um, but one of the things that we always set up for the ecosystems we're going in is we have a Slack channel, of course, for our team. And we get a notification every single time somebody makes a profile. And so it's like one of my favorite things is to like log on to our Slack each day and be like, oh, wow, a bunch of new people made a profile on Ecomap Baltimore or a bunch of new people made a profile in Dallas. And they like tell you, you know, what areas they need and how they want to be helped. And so it's just really validating to see that even if I don't get to be interacting one on one with those entrepreneurs, which I do often in my other ventures, it's still really awesome to see them, you know, using our platform and exploring the resources um, and really engaging with their community often for the first time.
And you talked about the COVID-19 pandemic a little bit and how it, it uh, often hinders your ability to go one-on-one -on -one and talk to entrepreneurs. So I wanted to sort of transition into that. With the onset of the pandemic now, how has life changed for your organization and the work that you're able to do? Yeah, absolutely. So with Ecomap, we were incredibly fortunate that our business model lended itself really well to the current conditions, right? Um, obviously, many businesses are struggling immensely right now because if people are staying at home, there's less funding flowing around, you know, it really has a negative impact on your bottom line. Um, but as we see these businesses struggling, we also see cities and states and universities and towns and even countries who are trying to find a way to support businesses um, and put them in front of the right resources and help them find alternative funding sources. And so that's like literally the definition of what Ecomap does. You know, we create these databases of every single resource that exists for entrepreneurs. And so very thankfully, you know, we were positively impacted by what went on with COVID because cities are looking for a way to help entrepreneurs at scale. You know, these funding programs, it's quite unfortunate, but you only have so much funding and you can only give it to so many businesses. So cities are really looking at our platform as a way to like for the same amount, you know, as like a small loan to a business, you can have a platform that helps, you know, millions of entrepreneurs find the different resources that are going to fit their needs. And so it's been incredibly busy um, on our end. You know, we have a lot of requests more than we can honestly keep up with. Um, and so it has been kind of challenging to, you know, navigate that. Um, and then it's also, we've been growing as a team a lot over the past few months. And it's a really interesting experience to like be onboarding new team members and not meeting them in person. Um, and so that's been really interesting as a leader to just kind of learn how you try to build camaraderie and you get team members close to each other when you don't get to see each other in person. And Pava, for all the youth, teens, and students who are aspiring to become entrepreneurs in the future, can you give us three tips for success for young entrepreneurs who are starting early? Oh, yeah. So the first thing is just don't get discouraged, right? Because entrepreneurship obviously is very difficult, and you're going to hit a lot of challenges that you don't foresee, um, and you're not going to know necessarily what to do at every single step of the way. And for a lot of people, um, especially when you're a student and you're coming from school where kind of the path is laid out, right? You go to classes, you do well in those classes, you ace the tests, you do extracurriculars, you apply to college. In entrepreneurship, there is none of that kind of linear path. Um, and so it can be disorienting and just know that like that disorientation is part of the process, right? It is absolutely okay to feel like you don't know what you're doing and that's how you know you're doing entrepreneurship right. So the first thing is just like, don't get discouraged if it starts to get kind of like overwhelming and you aren't sure where to go next. Um, the second thing is that learn from as many other entrepreneurs as you can. And you are obviously doing a really great job of that already, right? Um, because I think that my number one source of information for how to run my venture, how to hire people, how to fundraise, all of that stuff came from entrepreneurs who were like very close to me in age, right? Um, the world is changing so rapidly that it's really great to have mentors who are older than you because they come, you know, they have a ton of insights, but they don't necessarily reflect like the current conditions of entrepreneurship. And so I have found that some of my best mentors are the ones who are like a few years older than me or a few years, you know, older than me in terms of their business, because they really have seen like what the landscape is like for entrepreneurship. So the second thing would just be like, look for peers who, you know, are at your stage or a little bit older for guidance, because that's going to be some of the best that you get. Um, and then the final thing is just like, know what you're doing is important, right? Like the world, if you haven't noticed, is kind of going through a lot right now in 2020. Let's just leave it at that. Um, and all of these problems that we're facing, whether it is climate change or systemic racism or poverty or wealth inequality, all of those things are solved by entrepreneurs, right? There have never been big examples in history where giant inequalities or giant problems were solved by policy, right? Or just by, you know, slow movement towards what is right. It's usually entrepreneurs, whether they are for-profit or non-profit or just community organizations, really pushing change. And so entrepreneurs literally are the ones who like change the world. And so just know that like what you're doing, especially at such a young age is super impactful and that you are one of those people who is actually going to be making a difference. And so hopefully that is motivating enough to keep you going through a lot of the hard stuff. And in your opinion, can entrepreneurship now be a means for one to exit their states of poverty or even homelessness? 
And if so, what do you think is the right way to approach it in order to achieve the maximum chance of success? Absolutely. So entrepreneurship is actually one of the best tools we have for reducing poverty, especially at the levels that we see, you know, in our cities where there is a resource strapped environment, right? Um, like small businesses make up the fabric of our economy, right? And especially if you look even to developing countries and you look at the type of economic development strategies that are used there, it is always entrepreneurship at the very, you know, they call it the base of the pyramid level, right? Um, and so fostering entrepreneurship throughout all income brackets, but especially lower ones is of utmost importance if we really want to see a growth and, you know, not only, you know, GDP and the bottom line and all of that, but in like the standard of living and in the reduction of wealth inequality, which are the two really big economic problems that we're facing right now. Um, and so if we want to do that, we have to get really creative because right now the entrepreneurial ecosystems aren't necessarily set up in a way to foster entrepreneurship at the you know lower income levels there is issues with accessing financing there is issues with support like getting community trust and community buy into new organizations and there's just straight up neglect of entire areas um, where there just is no resources there's no accelerators no incubators um, nothing to really help businesses get off the ground so the first thing is that we need to mobilize a lot of really grassroots initiatives to rebuild trust in communities and to empower communities to build their own solutions. Because oftentimes what happens is that people come in and they're like, oh, well, there's poverty or there's violence or there's food deserts. Um, I'm going to make an organization to solve that, right? It's outsiders who have never really lived and breathed these problems coming in and trying to design solutions for communities which is not the correct way to go about it, right? Um, so the correct approach is to provide the given resources and the given mentorship and the given funding to these communities so that the talent within these communities can build their own solutions. Um, and I think only then when we take that approach are we really going to see the results that we want to see and need to see. And Pava, what would your message be for teens and youth who are aspiring to become innovators and leaders like yourself? I would say start with understanding the problem that you want to solve, right? Um, when you first become an entrepreneur, it's very tempting to come up with an idea and a, a, like a solution for something and get really excited about that solution. Um, but if you want to build something that lasts, a sustainable venture in some way, shape or form, entrepreneurship is about solving problems, not about driving solutions. And there's like a very nuanced difference between those two things. But if you are solving a legitimate problem, you are going to end up building a successful venture um, in some way, shape or form. And so as long as that problem is there, you will be fine. Um, but if you just start at the top and say, you know what, I wanna make a mobile app that does this without ever really understanding what those needs are, you might end up building something that doesn't have you know, a place in the market as they call it. And that's true whether it's for-profit or whether it's non-profit. So if you're really interested in innovating and making an impact, start with fundamentally understanding the problems that are out there and why those problems continue to persist. Pava, thank you so much for your amazing service to our entrepreneurs and to our country. And thank you so much for your time today and answering all of our questions. Absolutely. Thank you so, so much for having me on and keep up the awesome work that you're doing.